<laughs> hard isn't it? <laughs> that is hard isn't it? Can you give me a picture with you? So? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question while you're taking a picture? What impact do you think, if okay, any, okay. will Canelo signing to the zone have on the uh, Wilder Fury pay per view? It just, it just. Thank you very much. Nick. It just means that the zone are the only people who are willing to put the money up for pay per view fights. <clears throat> pay per view. You have to understand. Pay per view is a really good thing. Nice thing for a broadcaster because it generates income for the broadcaster without you having to pay a rights fee. Right? Yeah. So what the zone are doing is something no one's ever done before. It is bankrolling the rights fees that's gone missing through you know because of the pay-per-view. So for example, 1.1 million buys for Canelo against Golovkin. 84.99, I don't know, call it 40 million dollars generated by that pay-per-view for the, for the show. The Zone are going to put that out in a rights fee. That's unprecedented. Right. And you haven't got to worry about maybe people won't buy it this time. Or maybe there'll be a technical problem and we've got to refund the pay-per-views. Right. Or maybe there's no hype in the build-up and all of a sudden it does 600,000. The money's there, it's banked. Right. And that's what I'm talking about with Joshua Wilder. If Showtime want to make an offer, I'm not, I'm not saying they're out of the run. Right. But they better be putting up 30 or 40 million for that fire. Because the zone will. So, we'll see. Talk about Wilder's, Wilder's $50 million offer. Sorry? Talk about um, Wilder's $50 million. There was no $50 million. There was no $50 million. No. He, sent a, he sent a private email to me saying, I'll give, well, I'll give Joshua $50 million from the Deontay Wilder's personal email account. So I said, okay, no problem, send a contract. He says, we won't send a contract until you publicly accept the offer. Then we found out that they went all around to other people trying to raise the finance, including to Frank Warren, <laughs> including to BT Sport, which is a competitor of Joshua's exclusive UK broadcaster, to try and get the fu funding together to make that offer. Maybe they never got it. But. They, they now said, I guess, that they don't want to negotiate until... No, we're talking, we're talking. Yeah, I'm talking okay, to some of Haley's team now. Quarter of some guys on the legal side. Are we making progress? Yeah, I think we are making progress. I mean, we're making progress because we've had the conversations. The most bizarre thing is how Shelley Finkel can refuse to have a meeting to discuss the biggest fight in boxing. But like his job is to map out the future and the career of Deontay Wilder. And he flat out refuses to discuss that fight. Right, so he says, oh, we'll, we'll talk about it after December 1. No, no, because we're fighting on April 13. This fight's not gonna get closed overnight. It's gonna take a couple of months because I know the state of the relationship. So why don't we start now? We don't have to close by December 1, but at least get to a position where we're getting there or we're getting close. So you know, we had a couple of those conversations uh, on Chicago Fight Week. And yeah, I think it started to, you know, just things like, okay, we won't accept that, but would you be willing to do this? That's all, that's like, you know, okay, it won't be that percentage. Oh, well, on the rematch clause, and the offer that we went back with recently is a two fight deal. You know, and you know they talked about the, uh, the first fight. Oh, it was a rematch clause for Joshua. That's because we put that in the terms, and they accepted it. Now we're saying, okay, we'll give you two fights: one in the UK, one in America. And, oh, right, okay. So you just want to cut? Yeah, yeah. They've had the offer. So you mean people have refused to talk to you? Think it was, yeah. So that's why. Basically, what it was is a guy who's close to Heyman, boxing lawyer, said, should we start talking about this? And I'll speak to Al, and you know, we get on very well. So I'd love to. So we started, and it's just like basic stuff, like, would you be willing to pay this? Or what about this split? Or what about if the rematch worked like this? Or some of it was no, some of it was, yeah, okay. But like, we sat down for 30 minutes, and I already felt like, oh, there's a bit of progress. You know, I mean, I'm in New York yeah. half of my life. Shelley Finkel has one fight. It's not like, you know, but he's got an obligation to represent his fight, not to turn down me. I'd meet anyone. 
if I thought there was a dollar to be made for my fight, I'd go to a meeting. So, you know. I think the public perception maybe in the beginning was that you were saying it had to be done before December 1st. No, no I've never said right. that. No, I just said that we can't wait till December 1st to start trying to discuss this deal. Because in an ideal world, it would be done before December 1. But I then come back and say, look, if you don't want to do it the deal before, at least let's get some points in action so that once it's done, we can sit down straight after the fight. It's still going to take a month. It's just not going to get done like that, you know. Yeah. Eddie, the impression I was getting is if Deontay wins on December yeah. 1st, that changes the whole dynamic. No, Hence, because our, di our offer is based only on him winning the fight. Because if he loses the fight, there'll be a rematch course. So the improved offer that we've made is subject to him winning. So yeah, I get your point on that, but actually if you think about what I've just said, the fight can only happen if he wins. So our offer is based on him winning. It's an improved offer with a split and a minimum guarantee and a two-way rematch. So that's why we've made those improved offers. Don't forget, he accepted the last offer. They come out now and say, it was a terrible offer. It was a joke. They accepted it. So now we've made an improved offer, not because we want to, but because we're presuming he beats Tyson Fury on December 1. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that two things. One is they expect to win. Two is if they lose, they'll probably move back to middleweight and defend the belts there. And three is Rocky Field is a world, is a world champion. So it's not really something that you'd naturally ask for. Um,